Thank you very much, Kirsten, for first of all pronouncing my name correctly, which is you are one of the rare persons. <laughs> and second, for giving the introduction, which you in the beginning, you described all the problems. And then uh, I would like to, first of all, acknowledge the contribution of also my, my co-author, Dr. Carl Smith, who is around and who will be able to deliver some of the leaflets if you wish to have, and I'm sure you will have uh, a lot of desire for it once you hear this presentation. I'm, uh, I'm very modest, as you can see. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to talk about the uh, concept of what you call blue-green dream. Dream is something, usually, you have a dream, you wake up and it's gone. This dream is designed to last for next 10, 100, 200 years or something like that. So you'll see how it is conceptualized to happen. Well, Blue Green Dream or BGD, we have, we all know what uh, Hamlet said. To be or not to be is the question now. We think to BGD or not to BGD is not the question. Every house, every street, every city, every country will one way or another have to deal with it and we Kirsty said this session is about people setting up the frame. We are also making it happen, and I will give you some examples. So it's a methodology to meet the needs of the future innovative spaces, spatial planning design of the cities and retrofitting existing ones. It's not just about new cities retrofitting existing ones, so that we have not only green infrastructure. I'm a bit controversial. Green infrastructure soon will become blue-green infrastructure because you can have a lot of parks. In Australia, they had a lot of, but they had six years of drought and all the trees died and so on. So you need water to support it, and the water plays hero. So we started by thinking of blue infrastructure, which is urban water, water supply, sanitation, drainage, flooding, all these things, and green spaces, and how they interact. In the past, they were dealt with separate people. My colleagues, water engineers, I've been a water engineer for 40 years, and see, I've been using wrong shampoo in the last 10 years, and my <laughs> color has changed. And then I've never spoken to landscape architects. And then now we see that we have to, not only landscape architects, we have to speak with the other people, with other professionals, because time of doing in silos is past. We have to create a multidisciplinary team, and we have to create a multidisciplinary benefits to our urban environment. And we then started by conceptualizing this project, which is, by the way, funded by European Innovation, European Institute of Innovation and Technology, by initial funding, but we have to create more uh, value and more in income to sustain the project. And uh, we have to deal with, not only with the water and green, we have to encompass all the others, the acoustic abatement, the biodiversity, the thermal comfort, CO2 scarcity, noise, air pollution, runoff. And all these in the past has been dealt with separate people. And as you see in the reports where one chapter written by one person from the same company and not read by the other person written the other chapter and so on. And you end up with the inconsistent city planning and so on. And this is something which we want to change. So we want to do the innovative planning of urban environment, so not only that urban water and green infrastructure are in better condition, but also we tackle all other ecosystem services which I mentioned in the previous slide. So we have to support adaptation for climate change and create urban resilience as a part of the innovative economy which previous two speakers have excellently presented. And then we have to deliver these through ecosystem services, multiple benefits to future and new retrofitted cities. And I'm going to present how do we do that. Well, Traditionally, we thought that if, if an urban area has water supply and sewage and drainage, that's it. It's good infrastructure. It's unfortunately not. We can have all that, and we still have problems. We have flooding, we have droughts, we have water shortages, and so on. And then Australian people at Monash University came up with this water-sensitive city, which is a great concept. We encompass it, but it still does not take into account all other ecosystem services, which we try to engage with in this Blue Green Dream project. And the key principle is the delivery of multi-beneficial solutions through natural processes. You don't have to bring a lot of hardware and heavy material and concrete and steel and so on. Try to use tree. Tree is not just a humble tree. Tree has 30 plus other functions. Tree can be refrigerator, tree can be air conditioner and many other things. And we can, in this project, we are doing it, we are quantifying, we are putting a figure on, on, on that. And that is the uh, interactions with the er urban ecosystems are quantified and we are 
dealing with. Well, let's go back to the evolution. And we think we are here. Everybody's happy, nicely dressed, good color screen, remote sensing, remote control, and so on. Unfortunately, we are not there. We are here. <laughs> we are facing enormous problem. We need three, four, five planet Earth. If we continue like this, wasting our resources, misusing these limited resources, and we think that there is a solution to it. We call it blue-green solutions. As you can see, we are, again, very modest. So, uh, well, what we are dealing with, this is part of London, which was supposed, oh, this is going automatically. I was thinking, go it one by one. Anyway, not only flooding, this is part of London, which should not be flooded once in 10 years. It is flooded five times every year. Water pollution, we are very much convinced that tunnel is a big mistake. Five billion spending on tunnel multifunction, money, monofunction could have been spent in green infrastructure and have the same benefits on the water pollution, but also many other benefits. And so on. Uh, it's the air pollution, which is a huge problem. It's the heat island. Cities are warmer. London center is five degrees warmer than surrounding area in summer. Pol air pollution in the center of London is much more bigger, and so on. It's noise. It's the uh, then food production, it's the energy efficiency of building, and so on. And there is a slide here which is dealing with crime and socioeconomical issues which are reduced if the city is retrofitted. And finally, healthy cities. It's not just about the, uh, being healthy because of the uh, better air quality and so on, but also living in a nice and green en en uh, environment continues to contribute to the uh, uh, health of the city. So how do we do in this project? Well, these are just a few examples. We are dealing with, we, are, we have brought together five leading European technical universities, actually four out of five. Zurich stayed out. We have Berlin, Paris, London, London which are considered to be the five leading European universities. We, Zurich stayed away because we got three million from European Union and they get 40 million from Swiss government to deal by themselves on this. So. <laughs> but they are now, they've just had an open starting in there, they want now to join us. This is a big experimental facility at the University of Paris. It's not a green roof, it's the blue green wave experimental facility. And we are also putting some experimental facilities at the green roof at our Imperial College. At the moment, I'm supervising seven doctoral students and every year about seven to six master students dealing with this area. So we are making a contribution to science, but by these people, we are supposed not to create just science, we are here to produce fast transfer of science into full-scale uh, implementation, and this is what we are doing. And we have seven partners, including some consulting companies, which are making it happen. So these are the partners. I'm going to have go quickly uh, through these slides. And uh, we involve, as I said, water people, biologists. This is the experimental facility here at the Reading University, experimenting with plants, also with the IT people with the atmospheric science people, with architects, spatial planners, and so on. We have a very multidisciplinary team, and we try to, co to come up with the innovative urban planning uh, solutions, tools, and consultancy. We, have, we are just two years down the project. We already have quite a few projects which are starting and implementing this blue-green technology as a, as, as, as a method for designing new cities. So in addition to these four countries, we are now creating a network of the European blue-green regional centers, and this is starting to then transfer this knowledge which we are developing in this center. It is not only dealing with the designing new parts of the city and retrofitting this, it also tackles the indoor environment, which often is very unhealthy, and also tackling the regional, local. It was mentioned that the gardens are considered by brownfield. In our case, gardens are essential elements of the urban infrastructure, which have also significant roles to play in the future. So this is typical case. This is present day technology everywhere in the world. This house is painted gray. It's nothing to deal with John Major. It's, it's the, it uses, misuses a lot of energy. We bring a lot of potable water and spend 40% of it for flooding, flushing toilet. We bring a lot of energy and waste it, food, heat, and so on. And we create exhaust heat. London will start buying air conditions and pump this hot air in the street and creating much more waste. So this is horizontal transfer, horizontal migration of resources, which we are wasting a lot. And we produce a lot of 
waste and send it down, down our next door neighbors. Unfortunately, this philosophy does not work anymore and this project is coming up with the solutions, including rainwater and wastewater are precious resources and they have to, be, everything has to be recycled and brought back to this gray house before it becomes blue greenhouse and we already have some examples. It also deals with the energy efficiency, energy. We do not have to import a lot of energy from the grid. We can generate a lot in our household and 30,000 houses in Holland are already not using any energy from grids. They are producing energy from the groundwater, from the soil, from waste recovery, from recycling, and they are even selling some energy to the end. We can recover energy from the, if you take a shower, heat from that hot water can be recycled and so on. So once we do it at the household level, then we go to the urban environment and green infrastructure plays an important role because it's not just to be green and healthy, it has many other functions. For example, evaporative cooling, if you have enough water that the tree evaporates, hot air goes up, cold air, cold air is a new resource. Managing cold air in urban design, we can significantly reduce energy for heating and cooling. We have some examples I will show you now. So our houses in the future will be more kind of secular economy houses, but we have to start it now. London is already missing out. Even the, spatial, the infrastructure plan, which is being discussed these days, is in the big need for upgrading, improving, because green and blue green infrastructure elements are just vaguely mentioned partially. It's not integrated, it's not. And London is missing the chance to become the, in the driving seat. London could become a leader in this area if it continues to be a little slow and so on. In 10 years, it will start to buying this technology from China, from the Netherlands, from elsewhere, which are now learning from us. Unfortunately, uh, local governments and central governments a bit too slow to pick this up. Things are changing quickly and economy and politicians have to be. So our houses of the future will be different. Our infrastructure will be different. Our green infrastructure has much, much bigger role. It is not just to be nice and green. It has a very important role in all this resource recycling. And we are here not only talking about this, we are quantifying, modeling, documenting, putting figures in terms of the technical and financial. Green facades are not there to be nice aesthetically. They have important function is the thermal insulations in biodiversity, in cleaning the air, cleaning water, and many other functions. So every little bit of our solutions, which is shown in this picture, our house of the future, roofs, 40% of the area in London are roofs not used at all. They are based of space. Roofs can be beautiful roof, multifunctional roof gardens, and square meter of that roof garden can be sold at the same price as this flat. Facades can be multifunctional, producing food, energy, uh, filtering air, water, and so on. And green infrastructure has a role. One of the major resources is cold air in summer. Well, in Britain, this is not a big issue because the temperature is not hot in summer, but it's coming. It's coming, and people say, well, London has not, didn't have any major disaster. Do we have to have a major disaster and kill 1,000 people to start thinking differently? No, we should start thinking now. Fortunately, there is no major disaster in New York was not so happy. They had three major disasters in one single year. Hot spell, which almost collapsed the whole city. Cold spell, which almost collapsed. And Sunday, three major disasters in one year. Does, do we have to, have to wait for London to have the same problem and then start thinking? I think we should start thinking differently now. So it's the flood risk reduction. It's not about the Thames barrier and big tunnel. It is about the managing local uh, a local storm, and then using this not as a nuisance, as a resource. And you have seen how this resource can be used in heat, uh, changing heat island, improving the food production. We have to start producing food in our city at much bigger scale. It's not only tower, ham tower hamlets which are doing it a bit of pieces, or it, it has to become, then we, we can then 30% of the food, we can. We already experiment with the fish farming on the roofs and the, and the green facades in Singapore and so on. That will reduce the need for transport and then reduce air pollution and noise and, and energy efficiency improved and so on. So then biodiversity is a big issue. We are not having enough bees and insects, pollinators in the cities and trees are dying. But to have a healthy biodiversity, you need not only green space, you need water. That's why I'm calling it the blue green infrastructure, which I think, and then in the end, we should have a healthy environment. We should be also monetized. Not every developer can pay for improved water quality, air quality, noise. This has to be funded from other sources. You cannot sell 
the improved air quality to the developer because they will never do it. They will then continue, and I think it missed big chances. Elephant Castle, big developments in London are already missing. So all these e icons which we are talking about are subject to research, but we are not only waiting for this research to be available in 10, 15 years. We are starting to do it now with the present day state of the art technology. We are using some of the, sorry for this complex <laughs> picture, but it's simple. It's water, air, air. with this, the water is then wastewater, blah, blah, blah. You de de disaggregate in functions, look at the interactions and make simple rules and then go back to quantify these interactions. So Blue Green Dream is about the integrated modeling system in which we future development of our city each of these water, energy, greenery, space, and so on is quantified. Then we look at interactions, we optimize these interactions in order that our future solutions have to be much cheaper to build, people living there have to pay much lower bills, and these properties have to have much higher values. And we are not talking that it is needed, we are doing it, we are presenting it, we are already bidding for projects to improve residential area. At the moment, this is done patchy, not, these interactions are not analyzed. Our future integrated solutions have to be lower construction, higher market value, and enhanced human health and so on. RIBA uh, is the British architects. They have some, uh, some indicators, but it's still, they think we should go for blue, green infrastructure, cover all the phases of fun, but it's very important we start the time. And time is when we write the terms of, con and, 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 and uh, in the, we write the, tender document, if you start doing with that later, it costs 10 times more. If you start at the master plan in the final project, it costs 100 times more. It has to be cheap, and that is how we do this green infrastructure at the requirement for solution. We have the possible blue-green concept, which makes it happen, and then detailed design is cheaper, and, and this process has to be become standard. In the end, we get the optimized solutions. It was mentioned by previous speaker. You solve flooding problem and you create another problem. You solve air pollution and you create something. Blue-green is about all these interactions between different uh, 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 ecosystem services, e elements, and then providing solution which is optimal for all these, and this is the methodology. What we would like to see, this is Imperial College campus, uh, and then uh, three museums, Robert Hall, College of Music and other, and Hyde Park. We want to see this as a blue-green hub and if possible to be world leading technology hub for this technology. Unfortunately, this is happening very slowly. A museum, a natural history museum has just started to doing little something. We would like to see all the other partners involved and then to have a blue green hub, which would not only have a green roof to be nice and looking, it has to, at the moment, Imperial, even Imperial is losing a lot of energy wasting and so on. So we should like to see this and this is possible but we have to act quickly. Uh, plans and the developments in London have to be designed differently. We just analyzed one of the recent plans and we analyzed, we, we've come out that 38, 40% of energy is wasted in the new development. Which if you just plant trees differently and give them other functions, we can, and this is another example in university campus in Croatia, 68, 46% of energy can be saved just by playing with the green infrastructure. And we manage, manage model documented. Garden by the Bay is half a billion project in Singapore. They asked us to use it as an open air laboratory because of the recycling which they are implementing. All this electricity comes from their own production at the site and we have accepted. We are now going to have PhD students to monitor why and what goes well, what doesn't. Half a year after we started the project, we were bid, we bid for a, together with some partners for a residential area in Singapore, and this is the first blue-green city, 6,000 residential houses. But it took half an hour discussing with their ministry, they say, let's, off we go. In London, it takes two years, and almost very little is happening, very slow, very slow. Things have to be started quickly, and this is a blue-green city in Singapore, which is going, and then World Bank building in Paris, we did the retrofitting, over 30% of energy was saved. Repay period is three, four years, and then, and so on. So, the implementation of this technology should not be delayed. We have knowledge, technology, models, quantification, and we have partners to make it happen. 
it takes government, local, central to be more proactive, adopt it, and then next phase, we think in the human civilization development, we are very modest as you, so <laughs> next era. So, so thank you very much. These are the contact details of mine and my research group, and I'm sure that I would be very much uh, talk to you, uh, all of the speakers, and then we can make change. Thank you, thank you. Tony, for making this happen.